Hebrews chapter 4 tells us the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm Pastor Bob Gray. I pastor the Emmanuel Baptist Church. Thank you for taking the time to come visit our YouTube channel. The Word of God is preeminent here at church, and we pray that every time the Bible's opened, every time the Word of God is spoken, that lives are changed. Thank you again for being here. Enjoy the services, and if I can do anything for you, my number's at the bottom of the screen. I would love to to hear from you. Now, let's get right to the preaching of God's Word. Colossians chapter 1, and uh, Heavenly Fathers, we turn to your Word and we get ready to look. God is going to get right in, get right out, and I think that you have so ordained this that uh, your truth will stand on its own. God, please, watch over us on this night. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to take you all the way back to 2017. And the, the, the principle I'm going to give you is comes straight out of my time with the Lord. And I was reminded over the past couple of months that these life-liberating principles, these things from God's Word that has helped me as a believer, and, and I just want to give it to you as a believer, and I think it will help all of us, and it's very easy to understand. I had come to Colossians on that day in Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 9, for this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now what we're about to read is one continuous sentence, all right? So if you'll pay attention, the punctuation leads us to where we cannot stop until we get somewhere down around verse 17. What a long sentence here. Verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, who hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him, and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. When I was reading that morning, I, I came to verse number nine, and I underlined and highlighted several phrases, because that's where my heart wants to be. My heart wants to be in verse number nine, filled with the knowledge of his will. I want to know what God wants. I, I don't want to walk this world without knowing what He wants, but I want to know what He wants in wisdom and in spiritual understanding. I just don't want to see it. I want to know how to get to it. And I want to be of a spiritual understanding. That's what I want. Look at verse 10. That ye might, and I underline, walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Let me tell you right now, my heart is, I want to be filled with his knowledge of his will. I want to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Look at this, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In 2017, my heart now is full because I'm like, God, this is exactly what I want to be. And this would be my prayer, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, patient, long-suffering with joyfulness. So I wanted to be filled with all knowledge, spiritual understanding. I wanted to walk worthy to the point of pleasing. I wanted to be fruitful in every good work. I wanted to increase in knowledge of the most holy. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be patient and long-suffering. And I wanted my attitude to be while I'm waiting and while I'm long-suffering. I want to be joyful. This is what I want. But when I came to verse 13, I circled the word darkness. Who hath delivered us? from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I tell you what I want every day 
And it's my heart's prayer, my heart's desire when I came to this text in 2017 and say, God, that's what I want. I want to be translated. I, I, I want to move at lightning speed at any given time from darkness to your kingdom. I don't want to inch there. I don't want to morph there. I don't want to take two hours to get there. God, I want to be translated. I, I, I want to be here. I'm right over there. So when I got to this point, then, then I remember writing this, this in, my, in my journal. Lord, please take away the darkness around me. I don't want to be surrounded by the things that would destroy me. If I could use you guys on the front row, Daniel, Jacoby, everybody in between, just leave your Bibles there. They won't rest on the chairs. So you might as well put them on the floor. Uh, so those are not Bible-friendly chairs. In fact, we found two, two uh, second graders stuck in the cushions today. So y'all come up and surround me, if you will. I, I wrote that in my journal, and then I got on my knees and I prayed. God, I want to be translated. And God, I want to be in your kingdom of your dear son. I want to walk with a life to where your son reigns in everything. I, I want to be joyful. I want to be strong. I want to be patient. And then when I got up off my knees, that day it didn't work. That day it was like, okay, God, I want to be delivered from the darkness. God, I don't want to be around darkness. I'm going to let you guys represent darkness, just kind of surround me. So that day, everywhere I went, just walk with me, everywhere I went, there still was darkness. I can remember getting up in 2017, and, 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 and this particular was a Monday, and, 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 and I was, came down to the church house, and I had to do some things, and, 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 and it didn't matter. Everywhere I went, I'm like, God, you hurry, hurry, catch up. Uh, God, God, I, I don't understand. I don't want to be surrounded by the ugly darkness. <laughs> but, but I'm sitting there going, God, you said in your word. And God, I'm claiming your word. I, I, I want to know your will. God, I want to be translated into the kingdom of your son. I, I don't want to live around this darkness. God, would you deliver me from the darkness? So that next morning, I got up and I read the verse again. I said, God, I'm telling you, I want to be filled with your knowledge, but the darkness is stopping me. I want to have your wisdom, but the darkness is stopping me. The spiritual understanding, but God, I'm surrounded by darkness. God, I want to walk worthy. I want to be pleasing. I want to be fruitful. I want to increase. I want to have strength. I want your glorious power. I want patience and long-suffering. But God, it is your job to deliver me from darkness. And then as I was studying it, I left out two words in my understanding. I'm going to read it how I understood it that day. Who hath delivered us from the darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of of his dear son. Is that what the verse says? No. And when I went back and read it, I was like, oh my goodness. He is not trying to deliver me from the darkness. He's trying to deliver me from the power of the darkness. Oh my soul. Y'all have belts on? Take your belt off. I hope your britches stay up. Take your belt off. Take it all the way off. Create a loop. Just create a loop about the size of my neck and my head. And be careful how big of a loop you make, all right? Just create a loop. Create a, there you go, just like that. So, so hook it together and, 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 and kind of hold it up to where it's, it's, it's the, hold it up like a halo. Um, there you go, like you're going to put it over my head. Mm, mm. Kobe, I know where you live, my friend. And uh, do, do you know, it's not the darkness. You, do you know what my prayer is? God, 
Don't let the darkness have power over me. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some things that you get involved in that God says, I can deliver you from the power of the darkness. You see, we want a utopia of no darkness. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not God's way. God's way is this. I can deliver you from the power of the darkness. When I realized that, it was such a life-liberating thing. Because now I didn't walk through this fear of being around darkness. All of a sudden, I didn't step into the world sullen, depressed, not, not liking what was going on. All of a sudden, I looked at the darkness, and now my prayer was, God, if Bob Gray gets himself into darkness on any level, I'm asking you when I get, watch the hair, I'm asking you when I get into the power that God, I'm not asking you, keep backing up and pull me with you. I'm not asking you, God, I need to be delivered from the power of the darkness and be translated back to where I need to be. Y'all, the prayer needs to be this. God, there's a lot of darkness out here, but God, don't let any darkness have power over my life. Young people, you listen to this. You're in darkness. This world's getting darker. And if somebody tells you this world's getting better, this world's not getting better, this world is getting darker. And there are missionaries that go to the field, they go to a very dark place. They go to a place of no morals. They go to a place of no sensitivity. They go to a place where they don't even think twice. So how does a Christian live in such a dark place? They are delivered from the power of of darkness. Can I ask you a question? How many are saved? Raise your hand. Then you have the power on the inside to be delivered from the darkness. And ladies and gentlemen, there ought to be translation taking place, and we ought to be being translated. And when you wake up every day, you are not praying to be taken out of darkness. You are praying, God, if there is a power of darkness around me that would destroy me, then God, I'm asking you that when that power, go ahead, Gavin, put it over me. When that power it all of a sudden takes hold of my, oh, watch the hair. When that power takes hold of the flesh and that power starts, God, I'm asking you, God, would you deliver me from the darkness and then translate me right back to the kingdom of your dear son? How do we make it in such a dark world? How are our children going to grow up being able to live in the flesh in a dark world of more opportunities than you have ever seen when you were growing up? I'm going to tell you how they're going to do it. You start praying for deliverance of the power of darkness. This is not odd terminology because, go to John 17. In John chapter 17, you're going to find out that this prayer, this statement who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son is in keeping with John 17. This is the Lord's prayer. The other, our Father which art in heaven, how were to be thy name. I try. That's the model prayer, but this is the Lord's prayer. Look at the, the Lord is praying. These words, John 17, 1, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. This is his prayer. And they have received them. 
and have known surely that I came from thee, and that they have believed that thou didst send me, I pray for them. What is his prayer? I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all are mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I'm glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep to thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Thou, that, those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, and that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world. Get ready, hold on. That they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves, and I have given them thy word. The world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Here it is. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the what, please? Oh, you listen to this. Evil is not sin. Evil is a plan to destroy. He never said keep them from sin. That's impossible. But he did say keep them from evil. And ladies and gentlemen, the world does not like you because you were made in the image of God. The devil does not like you because you were made in the image of God. The flesh does not like the fact that your soul has been redeemed, and the devil right now is setting up snares of evil that he wants to ensnare you, and he wants to drag you someplace you don't want to go, and all of a sudden, this is the Christian life. The Christian life is this and that. It's this end to this end. But you know what our prayer is? God, I want to know your will. God, I want to do what's right. God, I want to be right there. God, I want to be strengthened. You wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't want that. But you need to pray for deliverance from what? The power. And what you don't want is for sin to reign in your mortal bodies. All that is in the flesh, Romans chapter 7, that is in my flesh. Your flesh, and I'm coming to you tonight telling you this, all of us this, whatever your struggle is, whatever is pulling you, you are not a victim. You are a victor. And the prayer needs to be this. God, I really want to serve you, but I know me. Do you know why right now it's a very getting a little bit quiet and people kind of staring a little bit? Because all of us are there. How many know what it's like to want to serve him and that, Brother Castillo, here you go, and that the power of darkness took advantage of your humanity. Go ahead and start pulling. And it, now here's, here's we're, get, we're getting ready to look at some scriptures. Keep going. And listen, that's why sometimes you're like, I, I just want to stay out of church. Go out that door. You know why you, what's happening? You need deliverance. And there are good Christians that you see the smile's gone and the singing's gone. And why isn't there that excitement? You want to know why? It's not because they hate God. It's because they truly think they're a victim. But you know what Paul was telling the Colossians? He can deliver you from the power and get you back and translate you right back to where you need to be. Well, if you're sitting here today and you're thinking to yourself, I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think I'm going to make it. I think this thing's bigger than me. I'm here to tell you right now, it's not bigger than you because whatever power of darkness has infiltrated your life, he paid for it at Calvary. He judged it at Calvary. And when you trusted him, he forgave it at Calvary. And you are dealing with a power that he has already forgiven. And if anybody ought to be bouncing back, it ought to be the children of God. And when somebody says, oh, I don't know, Pastor, 
I've gone too far. Would somebody please explain to me where that line's at? Where is that line of too far? He separated our sins as far as the east is from the west. I'm going to give you several things and we're done. The, the darkness only has power because I walked in it at one time. Beer holds, alcohol holds no attraction for me. Here's why. I've never drunk it. It doesn't make me better than anybody who has. I've just never drunk it. So when somebody else, the power of that, of that darkness, be kind, the power of that darkness to some people, oh, it's bothering you. Thank you. You put somebody around beer, they get the sniff of alcohol. That power of darkness, do you know why? Because it's where they used to walk. But the same God that delivered you the first time is the same God that can deliver you the second time. And what we don't need is Pharisees standing over here. So I don't know why alcohol such as a big pull on their life. It's because when they were a little boy, mama used to give it to them in their bottle. And that's because when they were a teenager, somebody gave it to them. And that's because somebody unbeknownst to them before Jesus Christ ever changed them. There was the power of darkness. I don't struggle with alcohol because I grew up in a Christian home. I don't struggle with drugs. I don't know what it's like. I can't even tell you how to take them. Now, I did have a drug problem when I was little. My mama drugged me to church and drugged me. Oh, that was old, but that still works. I don't know what it's like. And the only reason some of you are struggling with darkness is probably because you walked in it at one time. Young people, you listen to your pastor. Don't ever get involved with darkness because darkness leaves an attraction for the flesh that you'll have to fight the rest of your life. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Guys and girls, how close does a match in gasoline have to get before it explodes? It never has to touch. And you take a young man and a young lady that have an attraction for themselves to, to each other. Let me tell you something. If you ever cross a line, then that power of darkness makes you susceptible. When I speak this way, Jonathan Zavala is sitting there looking at me like, what in the world, Pastor, are you talking about? How old are you, John? Four. Oh, good night, man. Fourteen. And, uh, but you know why Jonathan's sitting there looking at me like, what are you talking? Because he's 14. But let him get 16 and 17. Listen. But the reason the power of darkness has an impact is because you'll walk there at one time. Look at Colossians 1.21. Let's look at that in the scriptures real quick. And, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by what, please? Wicked works. Oh, my friend, listen. Anytime you get involved in wicked works, it does become a portal in your life to go back to. Please don't think you have outlived the flesh. Please don't think you have cleansed the flesh to the point that it will never hurt you. And that's why you young men and you young ladies, let me tell you something. Never, never, never get involved in any darkness because you're not bigger than the darkness. Your daddy wasn't bigger than the darkness. Your granddaddy wasn't bigger than the darkness. Your forefathers weren't bigger than the darkness. And there's a lot of people here that would never embarrass themselves right now, but they could stand up and tell you, hey, listen to me, I battle it every day. And the only reason I can battle it and stay alive is because I pray for deliverance. God, deliver me from the power of darkness and translate me right back. Get me right back. The second thing I'd like to tell you is this. To be delivered is not a program, but a person. 
Look at verse 14. We have to know this. Boy, this set me free. And I no longer had to be a victim. I no longer had to think to myself, because I did, that's who I am. Nuh uh, that's what I did, but that's not who I am. I'll say that again. That's what I did, but that's not who I am. And there are Christians all over the place that think they are what they've done. No, ma'am. No, sir. What you did was forgiven by Jesus Christ and paid for on the cross. You are holy. You are a royal priesthood. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are righteous. You let that trumpet sound. You're going to heaven. You just did what you used to be before Christ. And what you have just done is not who you are because who you are is not the flesh. And it's not the depraved. It's you're a child of God. Let that trumpet sound and you're out of here. But understand this. If you say, oh, what is the program? It's almost like this. When you're taken, somebody take me. Oh, no, be kind. Here's how most people think. Go ahead. Oh, I need to call that hotline. I need that. What are those 12 steps to success and what? Okay, it's, it's, it's alpha beta. What, what do I chant to get out of this? And most people think it's a program. So here's how they fight, Cliff Polk. Here's how they fight. I just got to get back there. Oh, it's too strong. I can't wait till Sunday. I'm not there. It's only Friday night. And how am I? Oh, no, no, no. It's not a program. It's not detox that somebody needs. You know what they need? Deliver me from the power and translate me back to where I need to be. It's not a program. It's a person. The third thing I want to tell you is this. The fight will be in your mind. Did you hear that? The fight will be in your mind. Look at verse 21. And, the, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your what? Mind. Could, you say, Pastor. Is it psychosomatic? Listen to this. It's spiritual psychosomatic. Because you're living someplace God does not live. And what we've done is we've alienated ourselves in our mind. Because we don't like ourselves. We think God doesn't like us. We don't understand the love of a father. Parents, can I get an amen on what I'm about to say? How many of us know how much we love our children and that no matter what they get themselves into, that they may think we're mad at them, but how many would understand and would say amen? We're not mad. We're not mad. Children, you listen to me. If the power of darkness has got you, and it's starting to get our children younger and younger and younger. You're only an enemy in your mind, but not in the heart of your parent. And if I could just get every young person to take a chance and go in and see their mom and their dad. And if you don't have a mom and dad, come in and see pastor. Pick somebody that you respect that's spiritual and just go get them and say, hey, let me tell you something. I need to talk to you because I need to see a human, visible response of how God feels. I got right with God in July of 1984. and We got to about November, December. And, and I had violated one of the things I told myself, I'm not going to, Bob, you're not going to do that. And I already told my dad, I said, Dad, these are some things I'm not going to do. And I was so disappointed in myself. And I thought, I'm a fake, I'm a fraud, I'm a phony. So I walked into his office and he was sitting behind his desk. I said, Dad, you got a couple of moments? I'm 17 years of age. I'm a senior in high school, getting ready to graduate in May. And I said, Dad, I need to talk to you. And I said, Dad, and I sat on that orange couch, and he came and sat on the orange chair, and he said, what's going on? I said, Dad, I got right with God back in July. He said, huh? And I said, Dad, Dad. I stepped back across the line. I said I would never step across. He looked at me, and he said, okay. I was waiting for him to blow up at me. 
And he looked at me and he said, did you ask the Lord to forgive you? Yes, sir. He goes, then I think you're forgiven. Y'all listen to this. If you're away from the Lord right now, it's in your mind. It's not in his heart. Because there's one word that tells us, look at verse number 20, and I'm done. Look at it. And having made peace through the blood of his what, please? Cross. Can I ask you a question? How old were you when he died? How much sins did you do when he died? Look at it. Having made peace through the blood of his cross by him. This is a holy God. To reconcile all things unto himself. Look at verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he what? Circle that word now, because here's where I started shouting. He's not waiting for any response from you to prove you're the real deal other than get translated back to his life. We put people on this trial. Well, if you'll do this and do this and do this and do this, maybe we'll believe you. Not your heavenly father. Your heavenly father forgave everything at Calvary, and he understands you don't want to be this way, and you want to be spiritual. You want to be strong. You want to be happy, and I desire to live in the kingdom of your son. I don't want to live in this old life and everything this world has. Listen, you may be away from the Lord, but it's you away from the Lord in your own mind. Because when he reconciled you, he reconciled you. Once saved, always saved. But God commended his love toward us and that while we, yet while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You're not being drugged away with any power right now. That God didn't know they existed. And he didn't know you were good. This is why he died. And one of the beautiful things about being saved is not that you get away with anything, it's that you can get away from anything. Can I say that again? It's not that you can get away with anything, it's the fact you can get away from anything. There's nothing you're involved in right now. There is, so, so can I just end this way? Where, how far have you been drugged? into the power of darkness. How long has it been dragging you? Oh, I, I promise you that there are people who sing in the choir and there are people who play in the orchestra and there are people who sing on this platform. There are ushers and there are greeters that you are struggling to be what you need to be because here's how you feel. I keep being Pulled by the power of darkness and I don't like it then stop giving in to it and rise up and say God I want to be delivered from the power of this darkness and I want to be translated back to where I need to be when I saw that in 2017 it was like I I am going to cry for help from the power of darkness. And the only darkness I step into is the darkness I've already stepped into. Now, y'all, straighten up your halos because you got the same issue I got. But the difference is this. Let's be a group of believers that we are like, God, deliver me from the power of, not darkness, but from the power of darkness and translate me back into the kingdom of your son. Darkness is around you. You'll never get away from it. But don't let the power of darkness. Boy, parents, y'all can have a seat. Musicians, if you'll come. Parents, is not our prayer, God. Don't let them get trapped. Boy, and this guy-girl thing, can I just stop right here and tell you this? The guy-girl thing, the Bible says strange woman, Horish woman, the wrong woman and a bad woman. The Bible says it's a deep ditch and a narrow pit. But you young men, listen to me. You better keep yourself out 
of that power. But if right now you're, you, that power is dragging you someplace, then mount up and say, I'm a child of God. And God, deliver me from this. And hit an old-fashioned altar. You young ladies, don't get drugged into that ditch. Because there's always a bad man and a wrong man. A strange man and a whorish man. A strange woman and a whorish woman. These two bring to a pit. And that I could go on and on and on about the darkness. I, I was telling my wife and somebody sent me a post of, 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 of a show that was out. And, and I'm like, who? Who even thinks this kind of stuff up? I was sent it by a pastor. And he said, Pastor, look at this. I said, who thinks this kind of stuff up? And then I said to myself, I, I need to tell the church about this. And then one of the ladies said, I wouldn't do that. Then I thought to myself, this is a darkness that none of our children know about. And I'm not going to use the pulpit to promote darkness. Young people, when your mom and dad say no, well, give me a list of reasons why no, they can't. To give you the list of reasons would be to educate you beyond your innocence, and at some point you just need to trust. But how come I can't have that app? Trust me. There is such a thing as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that will ruin your garden. You never will be under the power of it if you never interact with it. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm still at 54 pretty stupid on a lot of levels. That was a bad word to say. Ignorant on a lot of levels. And I praise God for it. My dad called me this past week and he said, uh, hey, can you run me to the airport? Used to do this every week of the world, every week of the world when I worked here, almost every week. And I said, absolutely. I took the truck by and picked them up Saturday morning and took them to the airport. And on our way to the airport, we got to talking about how I was raised. And we got to talking about the decisions that my daddy had to make on behalf of us kids, to keep us away from certain things going on in the Gray family that I never knew about. I praise God that my daddy had enough wisdom. and He was just a young daddy to say, I'm not going to introduce my boy to that power of that darkness, because, or that darkness, because that darkness has a built-in power, and I don't want him to struggle. But if tonight you've been taken by the power of darkness, listen, he can deliver you and translate you back to the kingdom of his son. Thank you for spending your time with us. Whether you watch the entire sermon or you just scrubbed yourself through to different points, I do appreciate you taking the time. If I can do something for you, please let me know. And I would encourage you, keep living for the Lord Jesus Christ, keep putting him first and tell others about him and I promise you, you'll find that fulfillment that you're looking for. God bless you. Thank you for watching us.